another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, it's all about the vow of disciple world's first race. What a wild week it's been. It feels just like yesterday we were announcing the Witch Queen, and now we find ourselves on the doorstep of a world first raid race. This is a weekend that many of you have been waiting for, strategically planning your power gains and grabbing armfuls of snacks from grocery store shelves. And under two days, the race begins. Let's get you up to speed. If you're new to Destiny, or have yet to engage in a raid, this is the pinnacle of our in-game content. Players around the world are challenged to compete, decoding devious puzzles while engaging in heavy combat through multiple activity encounters. We're not just talking a few enemies here and there, but hordes of combatants clawing away at lives and time while players race to the finish line. We expect no different from the vow of the disciple with multiple teams at the final boss trading attempts at reaching victory. Now let's talk rules. The Royal First Race for Vow of the Disciple will take place in contest mode. This is a unique variant of the raid, only offer for the first 24 hours, capping every guardian at a specific power level to ensure an even playing field. We announced last week that 1530 power is your target, as this will be the highest power your guardian will perform at against the enemies you face. Here's a quick bulleted list for all who are in the hunt for the world first race. Vow the Disciple race timeline will start on Saturday, March the 5th at 10 a.m. Pacific and will end Sunday, March the 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Now contest mode. Contest mode will cap all players at 20 power below each encounter of the raid for the full 24 hours of the race. Artifact power is enabled, but only provides benefit to players up to the cap of 1530 power for contest mode. You'll want to reach 1530 power by Saturday to have a fighting chance in each encounter. Some gear items will be disabled in the raid for the duration of the contest mode due to general issues that could provide gameplay benefits. While these items may be used in other activities, perks and functionality on the following items will be nullified within the Vow of Disciple raid with additional negative impacts to power level if equipped. These are the weapons that will be disabled. Igalos SMG, Imperial Needle Legendary Bow, Grand Overture Exotic Machine Gun, Warcliffe Coil Exotic Rocket Launcher. Now I'm not sure what the bug is for Grand Overture. I do know that Imperial Needle and Igalos both got the 40% buff that was handed out to exotic primaries. They weren't supposed to get it, but they did. Now armor and mods that are also being dealt with. Worm Guy Caress, Titan Exotic Gauntlets, Peregrine Grease, Titan Exotic Legs, and Suppressing Glaive Artifact Armor Mod. Note, Additional items may be disabled if issues are found prior to the start of the race. Stay tuned at Bungie Help for the final list to be published on Saturday morning. Yeah, guys, we've kind of held off on like what we're going to be using in the raid. I wanted to see this list first. I'm sure more will be added to this list. Either way, though, we're probably going to be putting out a video tomorrow going over the things I'm going to be bringing into the raid, at least with my team. And by the way, this is my team right here. Yo, we'll be raiding this Saturday. I'm really starting to show my age in here, man. Now, completion. The first team to complete all encounters, loot the final chest and return to orbit will earn the title of world's first. Note, the six fire team members present upon the completion of the final encounter will be declared the winners and be awarded raids world first title belts. Any member of the fire team who leaves during the earlier encounter completions will not qualify. Wow. Any member of the fire team who leaves during earlier encounter completions will not qualify. So if you want to swap characters, no, you can't if you want to qualify. Now winners will be announced via Destiny in the game after validation process. More details on that below. Also, this is the belt. Looking sexy. Now, we'll be watching as players progress through each encounter, ensuring a fair race among all participants. Any players found to be breaking our terms of service or manipulating game content can be subject to suspensions or bans. Once we have record of a fire team crossing the finish line, we'll spend some time validating a clean completion before announcing the world first fire team via Destiny the Game on Twitter. Full rules and legal terms can be found here. If you complete the contest mode version of the Valve Disciple during the first 20 24 hours, you will receive a unique emblem to celebrate your victory. Oh, oh, that's a good looking emblem, guys. No lie. That's a good looking emblem. I want it. I want it. Now, contest mode will be the ultimate challenge for many, but for others, it's more fun and interesting to watch some Destiny PvE legends take this on. We'll be alongside you in Twitch chats and more as players make their way through the activity. If you like an additional space to watch as the race goes on, check out Bungie.net Raid Race once the raid goes live, or tune in to the Raid Daily Tailgate hosted by Professor Broman and Rec 1568. Now, as tradition, there will also be some wonderful Bungie rewards unlocked for players to purchase if they take on the challenge, such as a jacket. 
it? Look at there, man. Dude, it just doesn't get cold enough in Florida, right? Like, I wear a jacket for a week here. But maybe. Maybe. I might buy this. I don't know. Seasonal pin for Vow of the Disciple. We will also be introducing a new pin reward for those who complete the raid before the season concludes. Also, a seal pin for those who want to display their mastery of the raid. Players who complete the Vow of the Disciple raid seal will also unlock a unique pin to display on their jackets, backpacks, cork boards, or whatever they see fit. Dude, I say it every time, man. I need to start collecting pins. Outside of the race, there will also be some great loot to earn. Don't worry, there isn't a 24-hour timer on any of the weapons or armor pieces found throughout the raid. Just for completing a single time, there's a pretty sweet emblem for you to collect. Oh, that looks good too. Take your time, hang out with friends, and enjoy the raid at your own pace. As always, we're excited to watch as you all dive in. No lie, guys, raid races are fun. I love them. We do them every year. I say the same thing every year too. I'm like, yo, I hate this fire team. I can't stand this. Normally, by like hour 14, I'm ready to just kill somebody. But when you cross that finish line, when you defeat that boss after hours of trying, it's a pretty damn good feeling. Now, the feedback never stops, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Since the release of The Witch Queen, the team has been collecting and consuming player feedback, paired with some late nights playing the content alongside you all. The team has identified a few areas of improvement, some things to take a bit of time to address, as we want to make sure the fixes that we implement do not create more issues for us to solve. That said, the team has a plan of action for Wellspring weapon drop rates, ascendant alloy drop rates for weapon crafting, and some general notes on areas that we're looking at for future Gambit tuning. If you follow game director Joe Blackburn on Twitter, you'll likely know most of the following, but we always want to make sure information is available in multiple places. So starting with the Wellspring weapon drop rates. Once you've completed the Witch Queen's campaign and begun to engage in the end game, a new activity appears in the throne world called the Wellspring. This is a fun six player match made activity offering offensive and defensive variants of the activity on a daily rotation. In Wellspring, players can earn four throne world themed weapons, each offering a variety of perks to mix and match for some fun combinations. Each of these weapons can be crafted, and some of these are required for progress on the Evidence Born quests from the Enclave. In a patch targeting next Thursday, we will be increasing the drop chances for both standard and deep sight resonant versions of these weapons. Finally, guys, they are just not dropping enough. Most notably, not necessarily the standard, like I feel like the standard is dropping just fine. It's the deep sight versions, right? Those are just so rare. Now, Ascendant Alloys, as you get deeper into the crafting game of the Witch Queen, you'll begin to unlock enhanced traits for your weapons. These come at a bit of a cost, each requiring Ascendant Alloys. These currencies are meant to be of in-game rarity, coming from higher difficulty activities as you fine-tune your weapons through combat. In addition to the weapons mentioned above, we'll be increasing your chances of receiving Ascendant Alloy through Master Wellspring completions, not just by the difficulty tier of the activity, but also based on your completion level. This will mean higher chances at earning Ascendant Alloys for Gold and Platinum completions, which can be earned by defeating champions and completing the activity quickly. We will continue to monitor and adjust drop rates as the season progresses. All right, so Master Wellspring completions, at least from my experience, I honestly thought the drop rates there were just bugged. But it looks like they're going to be fixing that. And I will say from the campaign replayable mission a day, I'm platinum doing the master version. We pretty much always, at least one of us on the fire team would get an Ascendant Alloy. There was one time we all three got one. It's still not guaranteed, but right now an Ascendant Alloy, in my opinion, its drop rate right now is okay to me if we can still purchase an enhanced trait permanently on a given weapon. So if you purchase enhance, tap the trigger. Whatever weapon you purchase that on, it's now unlocked for you to switch to whenever. I hate the fact that Ascendant Alloy is as rare as it is, even getting one every 20 minutes, for you to just spend it on an enhanced trait that then just turn around if you want to try out another trait and then you got to spend another Ascendant Alloy to go back. This is just turning into a situation where I'm actually going to start crafting multiple of the same weapons. Again, hopefully Bungie will hear us on this because this is something that needs to be fixed. Now, Gambit Tuning, while we do not have any firm plans to share this time, the team wanted to highlight a few areas that we're actively monitoring. Heavy weapon usage, with heavy ammo being available from clearing fronts as you collect modes, it's become far easier to have a tracking rocket or two in the tube, prepped and ready for an impending invader. Galar impacts, a particularly decent punch, especially with tracking wolfpack rounds after detonation. Also, invader frequency. While tuning to general invader frequency has helped to reduce back-to-back -back invades from occurring as often, we're still seeing some general feedback that it can be difficult 
difficult to handle invaders, especially during primeval phases. Now, primeval phase health. With the changes to primeval healing, we're seeing more reports of lengthy boss phases thanks to some skilled invaders. We appreciate all who have been giving feedback since launch and will report back in the next few weeks after we've had time to collect more feedback and additional data to inform our next steps. Guys, to be honest with you, I am not committed enough to Gamut to really know where I sit with it, but I did hear that the overall heavy usage is uh, pretty abysmal now. Now, prime rewards. Oh, we've got hard light and a hard light ornament, a sparrow, as well as a legendary ghost hologram. Guys, if you don't have hard light, if you're a new player and you already have Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime, link it right now to your Bungie account and you can get these loots for free. Now, Steam Deck and Destiny 2. Earlier this week, a help article went live which contained information about Destiny 2 on Steam Deck. We'd like to provide some additional information as to why running Destiny 2 on Steam OS and Linux is currently not supported. Our goal is to maintain a secure environment for Destiny 2 as it features both PvE and PvP combat in an evolving dynamic role. Maintaining the integrity of our security is complex and a long-term process. In some cases, it means teaming up with partners like BattleEye and following the recommendations. In others, it means choosing to not support platforms that could provide bad actors with a way of compromising our own Bungie-developed anti-cheat security system. Steam Deck is not a supportive platform and using the device will trigger an automated security systems to see usage as a potential threat to the community. While we will investigate possibilities of support for new and future platforms, we do not have any additional information at this time. Again, guys, Steam Deck is going to be essentially a handheld device similar to like the Switch, but for your Steam games. Pretty cool, man. I'm actually excited. I haven't pre-ordered one yet, but I want one. Unfortunately, we can't play Destiny on it. Next up, we had a number of hot fixes that went out today. We covered that earlier in a little more detail if you want to check out that video, but essentially things like Grave Robber Perk should now be working on Enigma. Quest for Parasite should be fixed now and also Overload Auto Rifle and SMG Artifacts should be working now. Now, Enhanced One-Two Punch has been disabled. Due to an issue causing some exotics to deal more damage than intended, we have disabled the Enhanced One-Two Punch trait. Weapons utilizing the Enhanced One-Two Punch trait will function as the regular One-Two Punch trait until it is re-enabled on March the 10th. Dude, it's kind of crazy. Like, what if these game-breaking bugs really made it into the raid? You would have had worlds first, literally kneeing a boss to death and getting the belts. Dude, that would be hysterical. Now, Wellspring Armor Rewards. Players who aren't getting rewards to drop from the Wellspring activity should be sure to claim any available armor rewards from Finch, the Throne World vendor. Claiming this armor should allow rewards to drop correctly from the Wellspring activity. Ah. Also, there is a number of known issues if any of these are affecting you. And as a final note here from dmg so much to do so little time thanks for joining us for another twa while i'm looking forward to the raid race on saturday i'm also looking forward to my sleep schedule getting back on track this last week has been full of later nights than i'm used to thanks in part to the legendary campaign and some sweet narrative content to chew on if you haven't already i highly recommend digging into the season the risen quest line for this week it's wonderful to dive even deeper into the backstories of characters we know and love even if they can somewhat be dark before we go i also want to give a shout out to all who have been donating to our Games to Give charity initiative. Yesterday, many of you joined our stream and kept those donations rolling, smashing our goals within one hour of runtime. As promised, we've unveiled Where's Twab shirt, currently available for pre-order over on the Bungie store. 10% of the profits from the sales of Where's Twab t-shirts will go to the Bungie Foundation. Law? No, they didn't. We have a Wear Twab shirt. Much love. And thank you all for being guardians of the world. Cheers, DMG. Guys, that is your Twab for this week. Again, we will be live Saturday. And actually, before we get into the raid on Saturday. We're going to watch that entire video from Mylan. Mylan just put out a video essentially going over the lore from this campaign, but like broke it down in a way for us to understand what the hell is happening in the campaign and how this is going to be leading up into the raid. And I think it's going to give us more clarity and context for what it is we're battling and why. And that's important to me, especially now considering how much the story has been just so juicy. So fellas, if you're interested in that, come by our Twitch Saturday morning. We'll be live a few hours before reset. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right